Okay, forget everything you think you know about Disney World snacks. Although Disney World snacks can be tasty and satisfying and super yummy, they can also be very deceiving. And I'm here to clear things up for you on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Disney World snacks are kind of a big deal to us. We love tasting around the Epcot festivals, having those seasonal treats for the first time, and reuniting with our longtime favorites. I do that every single time I'm in Disney World, but that doesn't mean Disney snacks are always the most reliable. So today we're going to talk about Disney World snack changes, surprising facts about them, and some taste reviews that even shocked us. Before we get started, keep in mind, we'll only be talking about a handful of specific snacks today. You can learn about all the snacks available across the Disney World parks, like literally every single one, by heading over to dfbstore.com and ordering one or all of our updated 2022 snack guides. And just because we love you, go ahead and type in the code YouTube before you check out and you'll get a discount on your overall purchase. Now these snack guides, honestly, we update them every single year with every single snack you can get in every park. They are very comfortable comprehensive because I don't know how to not be a perfectionist. So there we go. Hope you like them. If you don't, there's a 100% money back guarantee. Let's dive in to a little snack talk next. Deception number one, Disney World snacks don't cost a lot of money. Believe it or not, some people do think that Disney World snacks should be like cheap. But in truth, Disney World snacks can be just as pricey as a quick service meal, a fast food meal, or in some cases, even as expensive as a table service entree. If you want one of those designer petite cakes at Amaret's Patisserie in Disney Springs, you're looking at spending 20 to $22 on a mini cake, but at least they're pretty and taste good, right? And if you want a box of a dozen Everglaze donuts from Disney Springs, you could wind up paying about 60 bucks. Each single price donut runs about 475 to 575. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again. Krispy Kremes exist everywhere and a box of 12 assorted donuts there costs like $9. Also, be wary of ordering that Hapabor sampler at Oga's Cantina and Disney's Hollywood Studios. For just a charcuterie board of Spam, pork rinds, pre-shredded string cheese, and other random meats and cheeses that you could probably find at your local supermarket, you'll be looking at paying $21 for something that's not super satisfying or necessarily delicious. But there are also snacks that cost less than you might think. We've got a whole video about snacks that cost $5 or less in Disney World, not too shabby, right? Some of the snacks we feature include the colorful lunchbox tarts at Woody's Lunchbox and Disney's Hollywood Studios, several of the bakery items from Lay All lingerie patisserie in Epcot, and the baked mac and cheese at Eight Spoon Cafe in Disney's Animal Kingdom, which is one of those snacks that I have to get every single time I'm in Disney World. Okay, deception number two, many Disney snacks stick around for good. Now, just when we track down the Disney World snack of our dreams, we might have to learn the hard way that these favorite treats sometimes live rather elusive lifestyles in the parks. The Adventureland Spring Roll Wagon has a rotating selection of flavors. Most recently, we've seen the cheeseburger, the buffalo chicken, and the 50th Celebration Spring Rolls with pastrami, pepper jack cheese, and a mustard dipping sauce lingering on the menu. But in the past, the carts also featured options like pepperoni pizza, Cuban, bacon mac, and cheese and Reuben rolls. You never know what you might find at the spring roll wagon, but it's always best to go earlier in the day rather than later, especially when the parks are busy since those popular rolls do have the tendency to sell out. And Dole Whip is a staple park treat that we might find ourselves totally lost without if it just up and left us completely one day, but we can usually rely on that traditional pineapple flavor to serve up that sweet and refreshing midday snack. But Dole Whip is known to sport coats of many different colors. Along with pineapple, we've seen different flavors, different toppings, and different seasonal offerings come and go. Some stick around for a long time, some for a very short time, and some tease us by showing up, disappearing, and coming back again. Right now, the pineapple upside down cake with Dole Whip on top is on the menu online at Aloha Isle, but they're not serving it at Aloha Isle every single time we go to check. So again, you just never know. And the Kakamora float that was introduced to us back in 2019 and left for a bit in 2020 and came back in 2021, then disappeared to make room for some of the 50th anniversary float offerings instead, which, okay, trading the Kakamora float for that 50th anniversary tropical serenade might've been worth it. Passion fruit, orange, orange guava juice, coconut soft serve, 
with an upside down pineapple cake pop, that's delicious. And Epcot's festival snacks are some of the most vagabondy vagabonds of all. Each time Disney releases their new festival menus, we hold our breaths, wondering which ones will return, which will be retired, what new options are gonna be introduced, what new booths are coming in. For the 2022 Flower and Garden Festival, we saw some of our past best of the fests say goodbye, like the Crawfish Etouffee at Magnolia Terrace, the Canard Confit a la Orange at Florida Lys, and the Popsicle Trio at Refreshment Port. But we also welcomed some new favorites, like the tangy and sweet grapefruit tart at the Citrus Blossom, shaped like a sunflower, and the vodka-based lavender martini at Refreshment Port, and the savory BLT scone at Cider House. So why do Disney World snacks come and go? Well, it's nothing personal. Sometimes it has to do with supply issues, like we experienced with the Ohana noodles at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, or the famous Pog juice that disappeared from several locations around Disney there for a while. Don't worry, both of these snacks are still around for now, but they made us sweat for a little bit. And sometimes many new switches have to do with the fact that Disney's ready to shake things up and keep things fresh. But it's always good to check out these menus ahead of time because Disney will update them to reflect their current offerings. And we update our DFB website and YouTube channel with the latest menu changes too. So don't be a stranger. We actually have a blog post every single week telling you every menu change that happened in Disney World. So we got that covered for you. Okay, deception number three, Disney drinks are always refreshing. Well, nothing like a good, tall, refreshing beverage to help you kick that Orlando heat. Unless, of course, you choose the alternate route and order something not refreshing, that you gotta order a second drink to go along with your first. I'm not bashing non-refreshing beverages at Disney World. In fact, some of them I really, really enjoy. I'm just warning you, not every drink is gonna quench your thirst. There are three types of non-refreshing drinks out there. First, you've got your spicy drinks, like the El Diablo Margarita from La Cava del Tequila, made with cucumber jalapeno juice, or the habanero lime galley shack swirl at Snack Shack in Disney's Typhoon Lagoon, made with dole whip mango and lime, tequila, habanero lime flavoring, Sprite, and lime chili rim. Are these drinks fun and different and have the ability to clear your sinuses? Yes, but even if you enjoy the sizzle on your tongue, drinking plenty of water is still a must in Disney World, so chase the heat down with some good old H2O afterwards. Then you got those super sugary cocktails, you know, those fun ones, the ones where you're swimming in blue curacao and fruit juice, like the Duck Duck Raz at the Boathouse in Disney Springs, made with blue curacao, blueberry and raspberry stoli, peach schnapps, lime juice, simple syrup, and foam, plus a mini rubber duck garnish. Don't eat him, he's your new pet now. You could also have an intergalactic drink that literally does the opposite of hydrating you. The fuzzy tauntaun at Oga's Cantina is going to make your lips go numb thanks to the buzz button foam topping on that fruity concoction. By the way, you can learn to make your own at home with our step-by-step recipe from the DFB website. I'll link that down in the description below. These drinks are a good time, but the sugar's bound to get stuck in your throat after a few sips. So again, make sure you've got a tall glass of water as a chaser for these guys. You always want to stay hydrated when you're drinking alcohol, of course. In the same vein, many of the non-alcoholic mocktails use a lemonade base. Lemonade's already pretty sugary as is, but once you add some fruity syrup to make it more unique than your average 25 cent lemonade stand concoction, you got double the sweetness coating your throat. For the Disney World 50th anniversary celebration, you can usually order the iridescent sip of break at multiple restaurant locations. I say usually because they sell out quite frequently. The sipabration is made with lemonade and strawberry fruit punch and comes with a dissolvable Disney character head that transforms the color of your beverage before your eyes. It's less creepy than it sounds, I promise, but yes, there is a dissolving character head. Over at Steakhouse 71 on the kids' drink menu, you can also order a different specialty character drink, which is, again, made with lemonade and flavored with cotton candy syrup. Now, this doesn't mean Disney doesn't have plenty of other refreshing drinks out there. The peach iced tea at the Joffrey's kiosks is a great thirst quencher, as well as the light and crisp Schofferhofer pink grapefruit Hefeweizen from Summerfest and the frozen mint tea from Oasis Sweets and Sips in Epcot. But just to make sure I'm emphasizing how important this is, if you really want to be hydrated while at Disney, you need water, water, water. If you forgot to bring your refillable water bottle to the parks, it never hurts to ask for a water cup at the Disney quick service locations. Most of them will be able to hand you one for free. All right, snack deception number four, snack prices stay the same. Well, when you see a price listed next to a snack on a Disney World menu, that same price isn't 100% guaranteed the next time you visit. In fact, it probably likely won't be. Much like Disney raises the prices for its tickets and hotels and merchandise, it also changes the prices for snacks and drinks and entrees too. Menu price hikes used to be a little more predictable back in the old days. Many items would spike at the beginning of Disney's fiscal year in October, but nowadays price changes are pretty unpredictable. Here are just a few of the most recent price increases we've worn across. Over at Yorkshire County Fish Shop, the fish and chips in Epcot 
Shot have gone up in price from eleven forty nine to twelve ninety nine. The Froscato, the Dole Whip from Wine Bar George in Disney Springs, has increased from thirteen to fourteen dollars. The beef and chicken nachos from Pecos Bill Tall Tale Inn and Cafe at Magic Kingdom have gone up from ten ninety nine to eleven forty nine. And the fried green tomatoes at Paddlefish in Disney Springs has increased from ten to twelve dollars. At the beginning of twenty twenty two, we saw literally hundreds of price increases sweep across the parks, which impacted classic treats like Dole Whips, Mickey Premium ice cream bars sandwiches, the select popcorn buckets, and refills. Granted, most of these increases only bump up the price of each item by one or two dollars, but those dollars add up quickly and could catch you off guard budget-wise. So make sure you're budgeting for more than you actually plan on spending at the parks, just to make sure you got some safety net money to fall back on if those price increases hit while you're there. So does Disney only increase snack prices? No. Although price spikes are more common, we've also seen price decreases for certain snack items too. Recently, we saw those PB&J Uncrustables, available at numerous Disney snack kiosks and resort gift shops, decrease from $6.49 to $4.49. Now, no, you can still save quite a bit of money on these items for your kids if you purchase them ahead of time at your local grocery or big box store, because Uncrustables normally come in a 10 count for around $10. But at Cinderella's Royal Table for the 50th Celebration Champagne Flight, it decreased from $25 to $24. How about that? And the L. Burbank Hand Cut Fries available at the Edison and Disney Springs decreased from $11 to $8. So Disney food prices can be tricky, but there are a lot of ways you can plan ahead to help you save money on dining and munching. And you know what certain YouTube account and website covers all those tips super thoroughly? That's right, we do. I'll link our video and money saving post in the description below. Deception number five, Disney snacks are universally loved. Now it's amazing to me how one person's go-to snack can be another person's I wouldn't touch that with a 39 and a half foot pole snack. We've got people on our team who love the Outpost mixed popcorn from Katsaka's Kettle and Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, but I respectively reject that opinion because that sweet and salty combo tastes just wrong. I don't like it. And we've got lots of treats like that on our team where some people love them and some people hate them. Controversial treats are a plenty on the planet of Batu specifically. Some love blue and green milk from the milk stand. Some would rather drink a bottle of perfume. Don't do that. And some folks love purchasing the soda detonators while others are like, you're paying $5.49 for a soda you could get for $3.99 at Rose's All American Cafe or any other quick service outside Batu. And fun fact for all you annual pass holders out there, if you purchase a bottled soda in one of the gift shops or at a Joffrey's kiosk, you'll be able to use that sweet annual pass holder discount on them. Just saying. But I digress. It's okay to have different opinions about those seemingly universally loved Disney snacks, because I promise you, one thing I've learned doing this for 15 years, there is no universally loved Disney snack. Now, when it comes to that traditional pineapple Dole Whip flavor, some of us on the DFB team find it sweet and refreshing and others find it too acidic for their liking. Though many of us also admitted that swirling the pineapple Dole Whip with a vanilla soft serve like you can do over at Aloha Isle definitely helps tame that super acidic bite. And let's not forget the major controversy surrounding Disney's jumbo turkey legs. Some of us love these hunks of salty meat on a bone and feel like it's a staple snack whether you're at Disney or any theme park or Renaissance Festival or wherever. But then there are those of us who are like, are you serious. Out of all the snacks in Disney World, that's what you want. But the heart wants what the heart wants, folks. And if you're craving a jumbo turkey leg, then by golly, get yourself a jumbo turkey leg. By the way, if you're trying to just track down a jumbo turkey leg, they like to hide out around different snack kiosks. But most recently, we've seen them around Sleepy Hollow Refreshments, available after 7 p.m., and Prince Eric's Village Market in Magic Kingdom, Fife and Drum Tavern at Epcot, and Yak and Yeti Quality Beverages in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Now, the important thing to take away from all of this, besides the fact that you now know how to get a cheaper bottled drink and where to find jumbo turkey legs is that you shouldn't feel pressured to buy a snack just because someone absolutely adores it. There are so many snacks for you to choose from around the park, so make sure the ones you pick align with your preferences instead of someone else's. And that includes me. Now, side note, some snacks are specific to a certain park. Unlike Dole Whips and turkey legs, you might not find every snack at multiple locations around Disney World property. So if you don't want to miss out on an exclusive Disney World snack, check out our Disney Snacks playlist featured on our YouTube channel. Okay, deception number six, Disney snacks can't change. We already talked about how Disney snack prices can change, but what about the snacks themselves? Surely they stay consistent. Not necessarily. Time and again, I've watched some of my favorite treats shape shift into something that still tastes kind of familiar, but isn't completely the same. So what does a snack evolution look like? 
Take my carrot cake cookie, for instance. When I first started ordering the carrot cake cookie back when the writer's stop in Disney's Hollywood Studios was still around, it had the perfect balance of cake to frosting ratio. The cookie cakes were thin, the frosting was thick, and all was right with the world. But the carrot cake cookie had to be rehomed once the writer's stop closed in 2016, and then it had to be rehomed again when Sweet Spells closed in 2018. So when the trolley car cafe picked up the treat, it underwent a little transformation. Gone were the days of thin cookie cakes. Now that tasty frosting is a accompanied by two massive spongy cookie cakes. Does that mean I hate the carrot cake cookie now? Not at all. The flavor and texture are still what I remember from way back when, but the carrot cake cookie of the past was definitely more cookie, while this version is much more cake. And more recently, many traditional snacks have received 50th anniversary makeovers, like my absolutely beloved peanut butter pie at Contempo Cafe. Before the festivities started taking place, this pie had a dome of peanut butter cookie dough, basically. I'm sure it wasn't cookie dough. I'm sure it's safe to eat, <laughs> but it was like this big old dome of like peanut butter cream cheese amazingness mounted on top of that tart shell. But now the peanut butter filling stays neatly inside the tart and it's topped with a chocolate glaze, a chocolate 50th medallion, edible glitter, and chocolate curls. It's also got this new banana sauce, which replaced the vanilla custard that used to be inside the shell. Admittedly, I missed the peanut butter mound. It made it look like a mini PB observatory, but the new version is pretty fancy and the peanut butter flavor is still very present here. It just, you don't get as much as you used to. So this still is a solid option for those looking for something rich and dense and peanut buttery. It's just not as great as it used to be. So what's the lesson here? Don't find yourself thrown off guard when you order a snack that you really enjoyed during your last visit and wind up being handed something that looks pretty different. This happens all the time. The snack just might be trying on a different look, whether it be because it changed locations or is celebrating a certain holiday or event, or in certain cases, just because there's a supply shortage or there's a change in suppliers and the snack's got to go with a plan B for the time being. Kind of like what we experienced with Pog Juice when Disney was switching its suppliers to Nestle from Coca-Cola. After the switch, Pog juice tasted much, much sweeter, almost too sweet. Don't worry, it's back to normal now. The suppliers switched again and put Coca-Cola back on the Pog Juice throne. That being said, give the new versions of these snacks a chance, especially if you're grabbing them from one of the Epcot Festival booths. Oftentimes we'll grab a snack from a festival booth one year and pronounce it as meh, but then it shows up the next year with better ingredients and a better taste. That's exactly what happened with the tuna poke from the Hawaii booth at last year's Food and Wine Festival. We'd had this item in the past and thought it was so-so, but it came back in 2021 with accompaniments of eel sauce, spicy mayonnaise, and crispy shrimp chips. Thanks to those additions, it wound up being one of our best of the fest, so everyone can change for the better. So Disney World snacks definitely have a good, bad, and ugly side, and now you know what to expect the next time you hit up the parks for an afternoon or evening bite. Remember, you can learn about hundreds of other snacks by picking up one of our 2022 DFB snack guides from the dfbstore.com, or if you want to learn about all the restaurants in Disney World and also see snack reviews, recommendations, and full color pictures, you can order the 2022 DFB guide to Walt Disney World Dining. Again, code YouTube gets you a discount on anything you order at dfbstore.com. Hopefully this makes Disney snacks a little bit clearer. The bottom line is things change a lot in Disney World and the best place to get all the updates is right here where you are. Good for you. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.